Hello everybody, the nameless narcissist here once again, a simple man diagnosed with NPD talking about pathological narcissism and the stuff that goes on in my head. Keep in mind, I am no clinician, so I can only speak to my own experiences, but if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and please follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, I got it all, and if I don't have it, it's probably not worth having. Anyways, so a couple days ago, I made a video critiquing an article saying how to spot a narcissist, right? Because these people do not encapsulate the full uh, range of narcissistic behaviors. Um, they have a very surface level understanding of it, it, it seems, and also they don't know the motivations behind it. So I thought, you know, I'm a narcissist. How about I make a video on the actual signs of a narcissist? Because, you know, I got some experience. Um, for this, I brought up a study uh, called Living with Pathological Narcissism, a quantitative study. Um, this is a great study that it, uh, shows the full range of narcissism and how grandiose and vulnerable traits often overlap within people who are pathologically narcissistic. Uh, they did a cluster analysis where they basically saw what uh, traits were most correlated and found some interesting subtypes. Um, so bear with me because I'm off to on my computer screen, so you're going to see the reflection in my glasses. I'm very self-conscious about that actually because somebody on my first video was like, I couldn't understand anything because uh, I couldn't pay attention because of the reflection in your glasses. And I was like, oh, well, that makes me sad. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. So basically um, what they did is they asked some people that have relatives that were either diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder or a general personality disorder among some other things, um, how their relatives behaved. And because, you know, you can't really trust a narcissist to reply accurately since we're always hiding the self and shit. So they were like, okay, the next best thing would be their loved ones and relatives and everything. Um, so they start off by saying that the DSM's definition of pathological narcissism is very poor and just does not reflect the full range of behaviors. Again, like 50% uh, of of clinicians misdiagnose pathological narcissism. 50%, isn't that crazy? Um, the most common ones they misdiagnose is, uh, is as uh, bipolar and depression, which makes sense because with pathological narcissism, you're constantly going in between grandiosity and vulnerability. So it looks to a lot of outsiders like bipolar, especially when you have prolonged periods of grandiosity or vulnerability. So basically it breaks this, it, watch this to the end because I need to do some clarification on these nodes afterwards. But basically it splits it up into uh, five nodes. One is grandiose fantasy proneness, one is perfectionism, one is uh, dissocial basically, and one is vulnerability, and one is grandios grandiosity. Um, and they basically got a bunch of traits and they have little examples actually. It's really cool, they have little examples of how the relatives describe these behaviors. And so I'm going to read off what uh, the examples and then relate my own experiences. Uh, some of these I won't identify with, obviously, because no two narcissists are alike. Uh, we all have our own presentations. So overarching dimension one, grandiosity. This was the most common one and also highly linked with, uh, highly correlated with vulnerable narcissism. So it says, as an example, um, constantly seeking president, like I quote, he puts himself on a show for people who can feed his self image, uh, constantly seeking praise and why can't I pronounce that accolades? I can't believe I can't pronounce that word for any good thing he does. Uh, he needs constant and complete attention. He's be in charge of everything, even though he expects everyone else to do all the work. So that also included some, uh, entitlement there, but obviously we require a lot of, you know, self-esteem juice to prop up our fragile self-esteem. Um, because deep down we feel very worthless and thus we need to basically have our front up at, so that people will admire us and we don't think we're worthless and then don't leave us. <laughs> Arrogance. He appears not, and I quote, he appears not to be concerned what other people think as though he is just right and superior about everything. Um, and that's a front, by the way. Uh, we are deeply affected by criticism and care very deeply what people think of us, but in public especially, I will pretend that I am just not bothered by any sort of criticism, even though I'll probably be brooding about it for a while and want revenge. Uh, my mother is very critical towards everyone around her, family, friends, neighbors, total strangers pa passing by. Everyone is stupid. Uh, yeah, I do this. I'm so guilty of this. Like, I will be passing by people on the street, and I'll tell people that I'm with, like, oh, man, look at that person was gross. Like, how stupid they look. Why are they behaving like that? 
Um, entitlement is number three. I paid all the bills. He spent his on partying, then tried to tell me what to do with my money. He took my bank card without permission constantly. He said he was entitled to it. I have never engaged in financial abuse. That is like the one, I mean, I guess I have kind of been like exploitative of people for money at points in my life, but it's never been an all pervasive thing. Um, and he won't pay taxes because he thinks they're a sham and he shouldn't have to just because other people say, okay, I don't remember reading that one. That's really funny because I never viewed that as, enti- as entitlement. I viewed that as like being special and grandiosity because I, I, I've actually done the exact same thing if I'm being honest. I don't anymore, but I've been like, oh, well, this rule is stupid. So, and I'm above that. So whatever. Um, that's just, you know, feeling special and above people. I'm not entirely sure how that's compensatory if I'm being honest. Envy and jealousy. So the issue here is that a lot of the people didn't distinguish between jealousy and envy because those things are easily confused. Jealousy is like, oh, your partner's going out with another guy and you're afraid that you're going to lose them basically. And so you're jealous. Envy is when you're afraid, when you won't covet something somebody else has. Quote, it got worse after our first son was born because he was no longer the center of my attention. I actually think he was jealous of the bond me and my son had. See, this is something I'm really afraid of doing. I don't have kids, so I can't really speak on it. But because other people can connect so much easier than I can, I'm afraid that like if I have a kid and they get a strong bond, I'll get really upset about their, um, you know, their bond that I can't share in. Um, and uh, quote, they have resentment for people who are happy seeing anyone happy or doing great things with their life makes them jealous and angry. Uh, this is another example of them using jealous instead of angry. I mean, instead of envy. I, I struggle with this a lot, honestly, because I just see people like being there and being happy. And like part of me doesn't believe that they aren't just like me, but like I know that they are and just that they aren't. And it just pisses me off because I'm like, why don't I deserve that? Why can't I have that? Uh, some participants uh, described believing that others are envious. For example, he thought that everyone was jealous uh, that he had money and good looks. Um, so this is something I... And I had a very vindictive twin on it too. Like I would assume that people were about to like betray me and shit because they wanted what I had and shit. Um, whenever somebody mistreats me, I assume that's because of envy and stuff. Obviously, no, that's not true now. But like it's still the knee-jerk reaction. He tried to convince everybody that people were just jealous of him because I had a nice truck. That one just makes me laugh because who the fuck is like, yeah, they're just jealous of my fucking truck. I'm fucking great. <laughs> like, attractiveness and intelligence, I get that one. I'm like, what the hell? Number five, exploitation. He brags how much he knows and will take somebody else's knowledge and say he knew it or claim it's his idea. So I do a really funny thing. Uh, I guess not funny, but like, I, this is a habit I'm trying to break, where if somebody mentions something and they'll be like, oh, do you know about this? I'll, and if I don't know about it, I'll be like, um, yeah, I think so. Um, or I'll just say that I do and wait them to, for them to talk about it. But usually, they'll be like, oh, I think so. Remind me. And then they'll be, then they'll explain it, and I'll be like, Oh yeah, yeah, I know about that, even though I had no fucking clue beforehand. Um, very funny. Uh, with two other siblings that are disabled, she uses her funding for disabilities to her advantage. I do not think she cares much for her quality of life, or she would use those funds for its intended use. I again, I never engage in financial abuse. I find that disgusting. Fuck that person. Uh, grandiose fantasy quote he believes that he will become a famous film screenwriter and producer although he has no education in film i believe i'm going to become a famous youtuber (laughs) oh man like it's a very real thing where i'm always like oh i'm going to be rich and famous one day i know it even though that like i don't objectively have any skills that will lead me to that uh he was extremely protective of me jealous and woefully insecure he went on missions where he was sure that world war three was about to start and he was going to save us he really believes this I have something similar. I don't believe World War III is going to start, but like, where I'll go on like these tangents about like, oh, one day I'm going to be rich. I won't get us out of here, especially to like my friends and stuff. I won't get us out of here. Like, we're going to be all so great. I'll like include them in my narcissism, in my grandiosity, grandiosity, whatever. God, fuck that person who insulted me. Um, I now I'm all insecure about my uh, pronunciation of grandiosity, even though it's my fucking accent. Grandiose self-importance. He thinks he knows everything. Conversations turn into an opportunity for him to educate me. Uh, that's and that's basically us just trying to impress people again prop up our low self-esteem um i want to show people how great i am so that they praise me and think i'm smart and intelligent he tells endless lies and elaborate stories about his past and the things he has achieved anyone who points out his inconsistencies in his stories is cut out of his life i'm lucky here i have lied about some stories in my life 
Uh, but I have achieved and experienced a lot. So I never really relied on the, um, <clears throat> on like lying about my achievements and stuff. Um, nowadays it's getting a little dicey. <laughs> Whatever. Compromise empathic ability. She has never once apologized for her abuse and acts as if thing as if it never happened. I have no idea how she can compartmentalize like that. There's no remorse. Um, so yeah, we don't feel remorse. We do feel regret though. Um, some people with NPD do feel remorse. I should clarify that. Not only 33% of people with NPD actually have a compromise empathic ability. Uh, that's important to keep in mind. Um, yeah, like it's weird because I can't handle the shame of having like raged out on somebody or something. So I'll hide myself and uh, for a little bit and then like I just will never acknowledge it. And like if they try to bring it up, I'll be like, I don't want to talk about that. And like maybe mutter out a quick apology so that they drop it. Uh, number nine, belief in own specialness. <clears throat> uh, relatives were described, they were somehow special, blah, blah, blah. Okay, quote, uh, fixate as their status as an important member of the community. Quote, he considered himself a cut above everyone and everything. Anyone who doesn't seem to him as exceptional will suffer. Very true. Um, I do believe that I am like a very unique person. I think that I am, you know, a, again, a cut above everybody because of that hierarchical thinking. I think I'm more intelligent, attractive uh, than basically everyone, but that can easily turn into I am the worst thing ever because the fluctuations between grandiosity and vulnerability, depending on how much self-esteem juice I'm getting. Uh, for instance, one say to their relatives, quote, like to brag about how she knows wealthy people and that if that makes her a better person. Well, it does make me a better person, damn it. Now, yeah, I'm guilty of this. Uh, once I went to an event, that kind of an important person was there and like I lied to people and told them that I met him. Or I have a friend who uh, knows a senator and either I'll brag about having a friend that knows a senator or uh, saying that like, oh yeah, I met them because of this person. I'm not saying that relatives love to name drop. If I knew fucking more people, I would. Well, I guess I did in high school because, like, I would be friend. I would talk to like the popular people. I'd be like, "Yeah, I was just talking to, just talking to Jeff over there. He loves me." Number ten, charming. Uh, he is fun-loving and generous in public. He is charming and highly intelligent. His public persona, and even with extended family, is very outgoing, funny, and helpful. He was beloved by others. He and he is very intelligent and driven. A highly successful individual, very social and uh, personable, and charming in public, funny, and the life of the party. Uh, this describes me to a T because we're trying to impress people, again, for self-esteem juice. Because, you know, again, deep down we feel so worthless and we're trying to basically cover that up. And we can become very convinced in our grandiosity um, when we... Um, we can become very, um, you know, convinced in our grandiosity when that's going well. Uh, overarching dimension two, vulnerability. Node one, contingent self-esteem. Quote, she only ever seems to be up when things are going well or if the attention is on her. He appears to be very confident, out, um, but must have comments and reassuring statements and whatnot several times a day. Yeah, like, it's, it's all a shell. We're always like, oh, yeah. But, like, the purpose of us appearing arrogant is so that you will reassure us. It's like, oh, you're, you're saying that I'm great, I am great, thank you, whatever. But then we'll be constantly asking for a reassurance. Like, I remember, like, Back at my old job, like, I would get really insecure about it, and I'd ask one of my friends just, like, constantly, like, oh, my God, I don't think I can do this. Like, I'm worthless, et cetera, et cetera, and, like, expect them to, you know, comfort me. I, I did that, too. I've had people cut me off for that before, too, just because I'm so fucking needy. Uh, no, number two, devaluing. <clears throat> Quote, on one of the more occasion, he's told me I'm a worthless person. I should kill myself because nobody would care. Yeah, like... Yeah, because, like, when we get mad at somebody or feel hurt by them, we kind of have to put them down the pedestal, like, down the hierarchy. Uh, I have to lash out and so I can feel better than them, and then their, com then their uh, comments don't matter because they're beneath me. Because, like, if they're beneath me, then, like, fucking, what the fuck do I care? Uh, he feels intellectually superior to everyone. He's constantly calling people idiotic, moron, whatever the insult is. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have an insult of the day. And, again, like, just going on the street... I'll just, like, be with my friends and just, like, insulting 90% of the people I see either in my head or out loud, depending on how, what the situation is. Um, my favorite uh, insult of the day was profligate. That one's fun. Uh, they are extremely grandiose, but when somebody has a confidence to stand up against them, they crumble into a sobbing mess, wondering why it's always their fault. Um, because, like, they devalue, we devalue ourselves, too. Like, I always say that people with NPD split on themselves, um, while people with BPD split on other people, if that makes sense. But they have a little bit more consistent, like, self-hate. Um, 
And I have recently started to stand up for myself a little more, at which point he will then start saying all the bad things are his fault and begging forgiveness. Uh, yeah, like, that just kind of happened. This is super interesting because I love these two examples because they show the transition from grandiosity, grandiosity to vulnerability uh, and how easy that is to achieve just through the slightest um, insults or whatever, or criticism. Because, like, that's... Because, um, like, some of these show kind of the like grandiose periods that last for like a few days or vulnerable periods that last for a few days. And that was literally in seconds. Like that's how fast these fluctuations can go because of how reliant we are on other people's opinions. No, number three, emotionally empty or cold. Um, he was largely sexually disengaged, a quote, he was largely sexually engaged, unable to connect, difficulty with eye contact. He used to speak of feeling dead. Yeah, um, shame fills me with a lot of... Um, it fills me with a lot of shame and often I would project that onto the women I was with uh, because I would think that they were judging me for being like disgusting and stuff and unable to connect. Yeah, I don't feel like I can really connect to people. Uh, it's really an issue and I'll have these brief moments where I feel like I do and then as soon as I leave, it's just gone. Just vapor. Uh, difficulty with eye contact. Funny story. I actually thought I was autistic for a little bit because of this, uh, but now it's different. I um, Like I remember once somebody was like, telling me that they loved me and like they were like look at me and I did and as soon as they would start saying again I didn't even notice I was doing it I would like look away because of the shame um because like looking at somebody like that it feels like they don't know the real me it feels like they don't love me um it feels like I've been faking something that they love or they're just lying to me uh he used to speak of feeling dead yeah I feel like I died as a child and all that's left of this shell another stated quote he was void of any of this emotion. There was nothing. In a situation of distress, he just never had any feeling. He was totally void of any word for the feeling. Um, I feel like I have some warmth. <laughs> but yeah, like, it's funny. When I'm, I remember once, like, this happens pretty frequently where, like, I'll be in a dangerous situation, like, in a car or something. And, like, I remember once I was with a bunch of my friends. We were going, and there was, like, the cars were backed up on one side, but somebody made a gap. And I was going this way, and obviously I couldn't see somebody trying to go through that gap. The guy, like, flies out almost hits me i'm like and i literally take the wheel and just like fuck i sit on the brakes take the wheel like that and i like look at him like as i'm like going into this parking lot to avoid him at like the last second i just look at him and do this what the fuck man i wasn't angry i wasn't distressed i was just annoyed and all my friends were like freaking out and i'm like guys calm the fuck down it wasn't that big of a deal um another side i gave him everything it was like pouring myself into an emotional black hole um, yeah, I actually had an ex tell me this once. Uh, they said that, like, they said that, um, what did they say? Oh, they gave me all the love that they could, but I never trusted it. And that, like, again, like the black hole, uh, example. Um, hiding the self. He comes in across very confident. He has very ch childish and insincere, but he, and he, they point out that this is all psychologically and physically. Uh, but he covers insecurities with bullish and intimidating behavior. So, yeah, like, Deep down, we do feel worthless, as I said. I think most of us are cognizant of that at some degree. Some people's self-esteem regulation goes so well that they aren't. But, yeah, we cover up that with this arrogant self to try to get this affirmation so we don't feel worthless. Um, and then another way they described it is through physical means. He will also have episodes of deep depression where he shuts himself off from human contact. He will hide in his room or disappear in a sleeper for days with no regard to his family or employer. Yeah, um, especially after I have a rage episode or something particularly shameful happens or somebody insults me, I will literally hide in my room. I will not come out until the feeling passes or somebody begs me to or I get some affirmation somehow, like from these videos. <laughs> Thanks for your self-esteem juice, everybody. Cheers. By the way, I'm not drunk. I'm just, it's late, so I'm sipping on some whiskey. Um... Yeah, hypersensitive, uh, walking on eggshells. Quote, she could not take advice or criticism from others and becomes very defensive and abusive if, if challenged. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, when some, like, any time that somebody tries to give me advice or, or criticism, it feels like it's just an attack on me, and it feels like it's proving how worthless I am. And so my, and it brings up shame, and my reaction to that is usually it gets covered up with anger, and I try to lash out. Uh, quote, it was an endless minefield of eggshells. A word and expression would be taken against me. Um, interestingly enough, although we are slightly biased towards negative emotions, um, we, we are actually really good at picking up subtle facial, facial expressions. So we'll, um, and like some comments, like we'll 
be very sensitive to that. And um, we're very sensitive to like seeing like disapproval and shit. And we can, in order to defend ourselves, we'll, yeah. Very irrational and volatile. And it can set her off on a rage, especially should I get her away. Yeah, I've had my fair share of rages, that's for sure. Um, it's funny, like when I get flown into like a legitimate rage, it's, it's like I'm watching myself in a movie. Like all my instincts just take over and I'm just on the attack. Uh, node six insecurity. He was, he was quote, he was really just a scared kid inside of a big, strong man's body. He got stuck when he was a child. Yeah. It feels like that a lot. Um, yeah, it's like, again, that front, you know what I mean? At the core, he feels unworthy, like a fake. And so pretty much all in, 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 introspection, self growth, growth is avoided at all costs. Um, yeah, like I basically constantly feel fake. Anything I even achieve, I'm like, I feel like I'm like, I feel like I don't deserve it. I feel like I would, like, I'm a fraud. Like, even when it comes to my diagnosis and making this channel, I have moments where I'm just like, what if I don't have MPD? What if I'm just like normal? And like, I'm just lying to everybody. Um, which is hilarious when you think about it, because, you know, that would be like, <laughs> even if that's what I was doing, I'd, it'd be implied that I was narcissistic. Um, number seven, rage. Uh, he has very fragile ego. He will fly off the handle and subject his target to hours of screaming, insults, and tantrum throwing. He has a temper tantrum like rage that's frightening and dangerous. He has hit me once, left bruises on the upper arms and back. He goes into a rage and hit walls, hits himself. Yeah, like I can, I've gotten physical a few times, um, only once or twice with like uh, other people. Um, often when I'm thrown into a rage, it will usually, there's been a couple times that like I went into a rage and I was just like yelling at my friends and I, I don't even remember what it was about. It wasn't even relevant. And like, I just couldn't get away. I started like fucking pushing shit over. And it ended with me just as hard as I can punching myself in the thigh. That happened a couple of times. I can see how that'd be uh, distressing to people, I guess. Yeah. Um, no number eight, effective instability. Rel um, mm. They frequently describe them as being anxious, anxious, including instances of hypochondria, agoraphobia, panic, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, relatives were also very commonly described having episodes of depression and depressive symptoms with such as low mood, problem sleeping. No, that one's funny. I, I've always had a problem sleeping. Uh, I took a bunch of melatonin as a kid to deal with it. Uh, I, my, I'm frequently woken up by nightmares. And it's not like they even bother me at this point because I'm so used to them, but they still wake me up. It sucks. Um, some participants always... And like, yeah, I'm like, again, our mood can get really low if we're not feel like we're living up to our expectations or not getting self-esteem issues. Um, quote, when I state I can't take anymore or say we can't be together, he threatens to kill himself. I've never done that. I've threatened to kill myself, but not like almost in a minute. I guess I kind of have. Oh, well. Quote, if he feels he's being criticized or blamed for something real or imagined, his attacks become self-destructive. I actually have a friend who said the only reason that my shit was tolerable is because they would notice the uh, self-destructiveness of it and see that it wasn't like as simple as me just being a dick. Yeah. Uh, nine, victim mentality. He seems, quote, he seems to think that he has been hard done by, by because all, after all he's done for everyone, you know, appreciate him as much as they could. So this relates to self-sacrificing, self-enhancement. Uh, a lot of people with narcissistic personality disorder, we will, uh, will like go out of our way to our own detriment to do things for people so that we can feel better about ourselves. And then when that's not returned because we have, you know, um, transactional relationships, we feel betrayed. We feel like we're not appreciated. We feel worthless. He, quote, he will fabricate or twist things that are said so he's either the hero or the victim in this situation. Um, I guess when you view victim like you did in the previous one, yeah, I do that. It, it's almost like a martyr complex. I hate to be seen as a victim. It's more of like a defiance of just like nobody fucking appreciates me and like an anger rather than I want, I don't want people to pity me. I fucking hate pity. Nobody should pity me. Uh, other personality features. Uh, no, no, and like these three are the ones that are associated with malignant narcissism actually. So these ones aren't, um, these ones aren't as normal to a classic narcissistic pathology. Uh, one perfectionism. I can quote, I cannot do anything at home. Everything I do is not to her standards and perfection. Uh, everything has to be done her way or it's wrong. She will put you down. She has complete control over everything. Remember we have really high expectations, not only of ourselves, but they get projected onto others because they're associated with us and we project parts of ourselves onto them. Vengeful. Quote, he has expressed doubts of wanting to hurt those who cause him problems. Um, quote, he is degrading and about anyone who does agree with him is very vengeful of those who refuse to conform to his desires. 
Quote, once somebody crosses him or he doesn't get his way, he becomes vindictive and will destroy your life and property and make, become physically abusive. Um, I, um, I remember when I was younger, um, I had a couple times where like, I felt people had wronged me. And I knew a couple of them were at a party and I knew they were underage, um, like below 21. <clears throat> and I, <laughs> I called the cops on them because I felt so wronged. Uh, I've had multiple times like that. Um, node three is suspicious. He would start fights in public places with people because he would claim they were looking at him. I've never started fights, but I wouldn't like, I would suspect people of being like, um, what's the word? I would suspect them of being like judging me from afar. I would, I always think people are like looking at me and either admiring me or judging me based on their facial expressions. And like, I hate, like when I see people talk and if somebody, if one of them like glances towards me real quick, I will be convinced they're talking about me. Quote, she is angry most days, obsessively talking about those who wronged her in the past, currently, or who probably will in the future. Yeah, I would go on these tangents. I go on tangents about, like, oh, fucking everybody. Like, I would go into a rage and, like, accuse everyone of wanting to betray me and how everybody has in the past, all that. I would, like, yell at them and be like, oh, like, you're all just fucking like me. At least I'm trying to be better. Uh, descriptive themes. So we're off the traits now, and these are just the things that are often associated Descriptive theme number one, trauma. Quote, he was extremely, um, his father was extremely, extraordinarily, Jesus, abusive both emotionally and physically, both to him and his mother. The father pushed uh, a young boy on a prostitute as a 12, 12th birthday gift. He was beaten on and off from ages to six to 15 when he got tall enough to threaten back. Another participant described the emotional upbringings of their relative. Quote, his mother was prone to being easily offended and playing with him and cutting off all contact except to tell him what a rotten son he was for months. Then suddenly talking to him again as if nothing has ever happened. His father, he said, was strict and expected a lot from him, both uh, rarely praised him. Whatever he would accomplish, something they would just demand better instead of congratulating him on his accomplishment. Um, personally, I think he is so wounded, uh, emotional, physical abuse and neglect, that he had to detach himself. Uh, he had to detach from himself and others just to survive. Um, there's also a descriptive theme of excessive re rigid religiosity, which surprised me. I'm not going to read it just because it doesn't apply to me that much, but I did once read the, uh, in high school, I read the scripture over and made my own theories on it so I could like feel smart and better than people. Uh, number three, substance abuse. Obviously, when you have a mental disorder, too much alcohol, you drive back to his work. I was always afraid of, drive, of a driving accident. Yeah. Um, I've struggled with that for a long time. I, yeah. So it says the expression of these subtypes, 69% uh, of the sample uh, had both these vulnerable and grandiose traits. It doesn't say how many had the, um, what's it called? The like malignant traits and stuff, which I'm really sad about. Uh, only 11% only focused on the grandiose features and only 20% focused on the vulnerable ones, which is super interesting because more of them were overtly vulnerable, apparently. Um, it may not have been as, it may have been that like, because I hypothesize that more of them have these overlapping traits but the person was either um, so caught up in their grandiosity or didn't have any grandiosity that they didn't see the other parts of it. Um, or that they just weren't narcissists. Um, they, okay, so then they go on to mention, which I find super interesting because I read this study and I actually hypothesized this. Nodes one, two, and three. So one is actually associated with, um, um, with antisocial traits, I think. Let me make sure. And then two with paranoid traits and three with uh, obsessive and compulsive disorder traits, which I found really interesting because these three personality disorders get confused for pathological narcissism all the time. I see it on my channel sometimes. People comment. I'm like, nah, that's not narcissism. That's not narcissism. That's OCPD. Um, and another note is that um, malignant narcissism is actually associated with um, paranoid and antisocial traits. So you can see how this does relate back to narcissism. Anyways, so that's it though. Long video, I know. Um, but this is an actual, these are the actual traits and examples of how you can recognize pathological narcissism if you're close to them. Um, I feel like most people, you know, are trying to see it from, <laughs> I want to point out, since it talked about hiding the self and how they are in public, you're not going to fucking spot one of us uh, just like at a party or something. You don't have to be close to us to see our neuroticism. Um, because like we're always trying to impress people and then when you're close to us, you see our fucking that we got issues. That's actually a mental illness and it's not a pleasant way to live. Um, yeah. And again, the, the, um, 
but yeah, that, so, and also by a narcissist, so I can relate my own um, ways of describing it. Sorry, I feel weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, send this to your friends, maybe, if they actually want to know what a narcissist is really like. Wait, I related to... Huh. That's interesting. I just realized I related to more of the malignant traits than I thought. Oh, that's funny. Maybe I am a malignant narcissist. Let's go. <laughs> See, I'm real. If that's true, I'm real proof that um, change is possible. No, but I doubt it. Anyways, hope you all have a good day. Take your fucking meds. And like, comment, and subscribe, please. Please. Please.